Hey everyone, welcome to Shifty's Club today. I'm going to talk about exactly what I promised in the last video. Sorry video game players, I really want to help you these few days, but these guys in the training car can go into the Georgia Marathon really need my help. So, I'll definitely get you a lot of material closer to after, um, as soon as they are done and I get all my results and let everyone know how I did. So, here's for you guys. Now, this appears to be the meta game as far as this Georgia Marathon's coming up. We got a bunch of Kyurum um, variants going wide, and the reason why is because of the 30 damage spread. You will be definitely seeing Kyurum all over the place, whether it's for Alligator Kyurum. Or the more popular Electrode Kyurum Cobalion. Now, I did test this and I didn't think it was that good, but if everyone thinks it's that good, then well, so be it. That auto loss to Reshu, Reshu Flosion because of their fast setup and ability to take prizes before your electrodes keep giving up prizes for the energy that they require on the field. And I definitely don't agree with the knocking out electrode part against faster decks because the faster decks seem to gain the advantage from you giving up prizes that easily. And that's basically where uh, they go wrong, but you'll definitely see a bunch of Kyurem variants. The way to beat these would definitely be either to find a steel type that's definitely the most helpful one or what you could also do is limit Kyurem spread damage and this would easily be solvable by using Vanillux. Vanillux can guarantee paralysis on one coin flip of heads off of two coin flips. You flip two coins, if one of them's heads, then the big Pokemon's paralyzed. So if you flip two coins and they're both tails, and you have a Victini on the bench, re-flip them. Chances are, 12.5% of the time, you're going to flip the heads. And the reason I say that is because you get a 25% chance twice. So... 25 divided by 2 is 12.5% that you're not going to flip heads, which is almost crazy. And of course, everyone just rolls two dice to try to make it 50-50. So. And they really don't try to get out of these responses, and they don't really tech in a bunch of switch cards. And that's where Kyurem builds hurt themselves, is with their lack of switch or full heal. Now, Full Heal is a great card. I will not, I will not say think bad about it whatsoever. And I think that a bunch of people are right about the triumphant unknown about how it cures the Vanillux uh, brain freeze, if you know what I mean, the paralysis. Um, and I really like that about the deck because it definitely stalls up against Curum. Now. Those are just two very good ideas of how to beat the Kyurem period. Now this deck in particular, what you want to do is limit their energy resources. What I would suggest is ban it from Triumphant. And this is actually a pretty good idea because if you watch one of my la other videos where I had a Reshiram Yamega ban it Blissey for Alligator deck, which I did put Kyurem in instead because I knew it was coming out, but Reshiram just seemed to fit, if you know what I mean, because it was just the other type that I didn't have in the deck. And, um, so it'd be Kyurem, Yamega, Bandit, Blissey, for Alligator. And, if you want to try something like this against Kyurem, it's a 50-50 shot. I will just go ahead and lay that out. But if you run something with a 2 or 3 Bandit, in it to take care of Kyurem. That is basically an auto loss for any kind of Electrode Kyurem Kabalion decks. 
is when you do something like this. <clears throat> um, and the reason it's an excuse me. <clears throat> the reason it's an auto loss is because not only have you um, excuse me, my. Sorry, I got something stuck in my throat from eating. <laughs> um, the reason why it's an auto loss is basically because of the fact that, I mean, hey, you're getting rid of all their energy. So, how are they going to be able to respond? And since they're in the loss zone, they're staying there and they're not coming back. And that's where you can get rid of special metals with Lost Remover. Ban it, Lost Remover, and a bunch of helpful resources to get it going. <laughs> Now, what kind of deck can I make with this? Well, there's always Bannet and Miss Magius that have always worked well together. Because why? Well, because of the Pokemon Vileplume. Miss Magius and Bannet both work by piling cards in your opponent's hand. One of them does it by piling trainer stadium supporters. The other one does it by piling cards, period. And Vileplume can definitely help help build that solution because your opponent can't play any trainer cards they'll usually run a high trainer count and not be able to respond to this and that's what I like about it excuse me for a second saying before sorry about that I don't have the YouTube no never um, <clears throat> but what is what I thought was um this is the best way to take care of the electrode Kieran Kabalion problem <clears throat> next is Chandelure and I'm guessing they do exactly what I did with Dodrio because you'd get the free retreat and probably Absol Prime now Here's kind of how it works, because all chandelier decks are different, and they try to attain different tasks. It's kind of hard to differentiate. So, most people have four Absol Prime, set one up active, or try to get it active. Why? Because at this point, your opponent has to put two damage counters on their Pokemon just to set them on the field. And... This is not a great idea as far as uh, just getting the Pokemon and putting two damage counters on them. But it definitely does obtain the spread on Deshind Lure because they're putting damage counters on your, you're putting damage counters on their spread. It really does help the spread game for three damage counters on anywhere you want and then retreat for another three damage counters, which is very helpful. And, um,. If you have Tropical Beach, I'm guessing that would be the, probably help you a lot in the deck, but um, they they usually put Absol Prime up front, and they'll let the damage counter stack. Then when they get uh, two Chandelure and a Dodrio set up, or usually three, do three Chandelure and a two Dodrio, so they got one extra of each. They will start the combo going 6-6, six and six, and then they'll have 4 switch, 4 junk arm, and you know, just anything to be able to switch them back and get another 3, obviously. And that's why the deck is actually pretty good. And most people would argue that the deck has no viable way of winning a game without putting damage on. Well, you're putting damage counters, and you're putting 3... I mean, there's no use for Kingdra. I mean, because Chandelure's already putting those damage counters, and if you need to put more, throw a switch down. I mean, it's pretty much not obvious. So, what do we really do to stop this? Well, there's really only one Pokemon in format that could really stop Chandelure dead in its tracks. And if you guys know what I mean, you know what I mean. <clears throat> well... Oh, who is it? Blissey Prom. Blissey Prom be able to solve this single-handedly. 
because no matter where you put your damage counters, Blizzard Prime can remove them just like that. So that's good to have like a Chansey sitting on the bench, you know, and maybe Reuniclus. So let's see Reuniclus, not a Ross's deck. Just one of those things. So what I'd suggest is to get rid of the Chandelure problem. You'd probably want to do something such as uh, Reuniclus to move the cycle and Blissey Prime to obviously remove them. And um, my favorite um, attackers for something like this would be Yamega or a Selgor. And a Selgor's not that popular. So if you guys want to use a Selgor for rogue, just rogue purposes, it'd be pretty good. But Yamega's not really that popular with with um, Blissey and Uniclus. Um, and you also need like a heavy attacker like say Zoroark. And there you go. Yamega, Zoroark, Reuniclus, Blissey. And then maybe a few basic Pokemon that have high hit points like say Reshiram, Zekrom, or Kirim just sitting on the bench, you know, just stalling some time, allow and all you need is a double colorless to start the attack. Because you can always move the damage counters onto them and attack. And that's simple. Okay. Next would be, well, you guys know better than I do. ZPS. Whether you, in most versions, run tornadoes too. So let's get that over with. ZPS has been in the format so long, we know pretty much how to beat it. When tornadoes came in. It was a little iffy, so we had to get used to it. So. How do we really beat this powerhouse? Well, for starters, a Don fan wouldn't hurt. <laughs> or Ken Kelder, for that matter. Because I found that ZP, uh, ZPS or ZPTS, either one, pretty weak. And I mean this too. They are very weak to, uh, one of, yeah, Landorus, Ken Kelder. That combo. 4 Landris and a 4 2 4 Kinkelder. It's almost impossible for your opponent to win off that situation if they're using ZPTS. Or ZPS. ZPS has a worse matchup, but ZPTS has a fighting chance, but almost no chance. And that's basically where uh, Tornadus doesn't do so well, is because, well, you can only hit for 80. And with a Rocky Helmet, I mean, you're already putting that 20 damage that. Uh, Tornadus does to you right back on so you're still doing that massive damage that you would do otherwise and because of all that fighting it's really helping your chances of getting done what you need so that's probably my best solution but if you need a single tech card that can uh, help with ZPS or ZPTS my own opinion and this is just an opinion, like every other opinion in the world would be Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo, if fit in an energy acceleration deck, can deal with ZPS. And not really Tornadus, but just ZPS in particular for that matter, because it's a basic, easy to set up, and works off multiple energy. The um next deck that I'll talk about is the Reshi versions, the Reshi Flosion and Reshi Boar. And now most people overhype the Reshi Flosion and they should be overhyping the Reshi Boar because in this format, with a catcher, you need to run Reshi Boar over Reshi Flosion because I'm gonna tell you right now, you've got Fisherman and you've got Energy Retrieval and Return. Because I was figuring out which one was which. <laughs> but um that's all I gotta tell you guys from that standpoint is that Sorry, um, that Reshi Boar is definitely, um, uh, under, way underhyped than it's supposed to be because, I mean, this deck is amazing. I mean, just simply amazing. And, um, if you had the right combination of M. Boar, Nantel's Reshiram, which would be, uh, 
two two power more, two attacking more, two tepig and or sorry, four, two pig knight and four tepig. Um, three three nine tails and four rush. Oh crap! I wasn't supposed to say it. No I'm kidding. You guys can go ahead and use that if you want. It's fine. It's probably the best way I've ever seen how to run in more period. But some people would rather have the third power in more so they wouldn't or third ability in more so they wouldn't be off, if you know what I mean. And I really respect that. But to beat this deck overall, you just need to get rid of their energy. And there's really no viable way to do this without something like ban it or and for and, and for that matter um, Typhlosion, if you just discard it, they'll just get right back. So, probably the best way of dealing with something like this is definitely to go with something such as, say, um, well, no, that doesn't really work. I was about to say Kings or Prime, but it only does 40. About to say for one energy to 120, yay! No, but no. Um, <laughs> but, um, I would say that Lantern Prime is probably the best way to deal with this. And the way to run Lantern Prime is with Embor. And Embor, and most people would prefer Ninetales. Some people prefer Shuckle, Unknown, and Seeker. Our promo Shuckle, if you don't know what that is, um, you can look it up. And it's uh, got a fermenting liquid Pokal body that says whenever you attach an energy to Shuckle, you draw a card. So or whenever you touch an energy card, sorry, it's not if you touch a double card, you don't get to draw two cards, so, um, I like that actually, and, um, and you just keep piling the energy in play, but most people would stick with Ninetales because it's just a solid draw, and you can easily get those energy back, because you can just easily play them back down as soon as you get a chance, so, the choice is yours, but I, I prefer, if you're going to try to beat something like Reshibor or Reshiflosion, you need to Fire with fire. Embor to Embor. Typhlosion to Embor. With Lantern attacking. And Lambor <laughs> really does solve a lot of problems in this metagame. Trust me. This deck, I have seen it take care of four different matchups that would otherwise really hurt it. Well, what are those matchups anyway? Well, to be honest, Tornadus is really hurt by this. And Lantern really does give a solvable problem to this. And you could even pair something like this up with another, say, fighting type Pokemon that would be helpful against ZPTS. Take it in, and you've got a Reshibar counter, and you've got ZPTS counter. But Tornadus overall is a Pokemon that people love to place in decks for consistency, so... It's good against those kind of leads, if you know what I mean. The second problem that takes care of is Donphan. Donphan is a major problem in the metagame, and the reason why is because once Donphan's up, it's up. But Switch always covers what Retreat costs can. And since Donphan is an exoskeleton, plus 120 HP, plus a 1 energy for 60 attack and spread on your own bench that you can easily move damage around me reading the close or something like that and then pull up as Zekrom, Reshiram, or Kirim. So Donphan is a very hard thing to put up with, especially for it one hit KOs, Lantern, originally, but when you see Donphan, bring up the Lantern, use its ability to change it into the water type. Simple. They take care of Don Fan because even with just the energy you have on you right now, you could still knock out Don Fan in one hit. Because if you had a lightning and two Cotylus and you used the Polka Power to change yourself into a or change Lantern into a water type, you'd still be able to do 70 times 2, which is 140 minus 20, is still 120 to knock out Don Fan. So that's number two. Number three. Yen Mega. Yen Mega is decreased in value dramatically because of its appearance of uh, the Prime Challenge box. Nevertheless, it is still used wide. Far and wide. Yen Mega is still a very popular Pokemon, so don't take your eyes off it for one minute. 
You have Mega being able to free attack when you have the same <clears throat> hand size as your opponent. It's pretty good. And I'd say for that matter, Ye Mega needs to be dealt with specifically. So, how do we really respond to this? Well, Lantern, like I said before, is a very great counter against Ye Mega. And because of its versatility, Ye Mega is usually ran with something such as Lantern and Donphan in some situations. And this is what Japanese players thought would be the best deck to go with. And I've got to agree with them. It is a great deck. I don't know about the best, but they're definitely right. Lantern really is that great of a card. And once card dealers from that went to Worlds, seeing that these Japanese players were using Lantern in their builds, they decided to up the price by about two or three bucks. So, because they thought the American players would still want them. Now, I agree with this totally. You have got to make some adjustments in selling cards to match the price of their needs. And Lantern is a high card, a card that's in high need right now because this point in metagame, you need Lantern to survive. If you're going to be Yamega, Don Fan, well, the Reshis all together, and even in some cases, Tornadus, and then the fourth one, which I'll get to in a second. Now, y'all probably all curious about right now. You gotta be wondering, oh my god, what's the second? What's the second? Come on, tell me what's the second. You know, I understand that people get excited over things like this, but for the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and just explain to myself why I choose Lantern Prime. Well, two retreat costs is not that great. 110 HP is okay. And it works with Lantern by having two different types that you could go to, or a secondary type you can go to, an attack that works for more energy, and a perfect partner in format that has a four retreat cost. So, how could this deck really be beneficial? Well, because it takes care of another upcoming problem that I really see. And the fourth and foremost for, for Lantern Prime Period is being able to solve the Durant problem. It seems inefficient and very unlikely, but it really does help. Being able to be teched in with inboard decks or ran with inboard decks really does help Lantern Prime overall be able to function as a certain deck overall. So Lantern and War is probably the best rogue deck we have right now in format to use. If you want to test it before these next few days, go right ahead. If you don't, that's fine. I can't give any deck list out right now because that's my deck that's fifth on the top five. You know, it's fifth place right now, and I really don't want to give the list out in case something happens to where I have to run it, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm still trying to find the cards for my shifty secret rogue deck, but if I don't find them, I'll have to go to my number two deck, which is already, so. I thought I'd just share that with you guys. Um, Well, there's your metagame. Best ways to counter it overall, and I'll definitely, in these next few videos, before, definitely the... Uh, Georgia Marathon, I'll be able to give you guys deck reviews over a bunch of really good decks that you could use, especially everyone's favorite, Landborn. <laughs> um, but I'll definitely get back with you guys as soon as I can, and I'll see you later. Action!